Uh, if you would, open your Bibles. We're going to go to two places. First, it is Ephesians chapter 6, and then uh, Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read a couple verses there. Uh, but we'll begin in Ephesians chapter 6. I'm only going to read the first three verses there before we go to Matthew chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And then if you would turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read just two verses that you're quite familiar with. Verse 9 and 10. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray, most gracious Heavenly Father. God, again, we thank you for another glorious day. Father, we come to you today as we honor our earthly fathers. And Lord, we need to do that. I think, especially in our present culture, uh, we're taught to not look up to our fathers. And we need to recognize them this day. But we don't want to forget that this not only is the Lord's day, but you are our heavenly father. And we need to come here today to honor you and to worship you, the perfect father. So, Father, we thank you for what you've done and all that you've given to us. And we ask now that during this service that your Holy Spirit would minister to us through your word. And, Lord, that you would be glorified by what we say and what we do. We thank you and we love you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share a couple illustrations of kind of the lighter side of things to begin with. What are fathers made of? A father is a thing that growls when it feels good and laughs very loud when it's scared half to death. A father never feels entirely worthy of the worship in a child's eyes. He's never quite the hero his daughter thinks, never quite the man his son believes him to be, and this worries him. Sometimes so he works too hard to try and smooth the rough, rough places in the road for those of his own who will follow him. A father is a thing that gets very angry when the first school grades aren't as good as he thinks they should be. He scolds his son, though he knows it's the teacher's fault. And fathers are what give daughters away to other men who aren't nearly good enough so they can have grandchildren who are smarter than anybody else's. <laughs> and then this goes along with something I said earlier about being sissies. One summer evening during a violent thunderstorm, a mother was tucking her small boy into bed. She went about to turn off the light when he asked with a tremor in his voice, Mommy, will you sleep with me tonight? And the mother smiled and gave him a reassuring hug. I can't, dear, she said. I have to sleep with your daddy. And there was a long silence, and it was finally broken. At last, in his shaky little voice, he said, The big sissy. Well, that's the light side of being a father. Let's move on in our text and see a, mere, a little more serious line of thought. In 2020, I preached a message on the prodigal son for Father's Day, which is a good message on how we ought to perceive the love and the devotion of the father to his children. But more importantly, as how our God views our relationship with him as his children. Today, I'm going to preach on the command of honoring our fathers. As a nation, we set aside this special day to honor our earthly fathers. But as a nation, we too, uh, and too often, forget to honor our heavenly father. 
as Christians, we ought to be doing both. Honoring our earthly fathers and our heavenly father, not just this day, but every day. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, tells us, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It's in reference to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. The other 10 commandments promise things if they're not kept. But in verse 5, or the fifth commandment, there's a promise of prolonged life. And oftentimes we wonder, well, what does that really mean? We see that with Samson and Absalom, they didn't live what we might consider long lives. They, they died early. Samson, a judge, died when he was a young man. He didn't obey his parents. We see that clearly in Judges, in Judges chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath and the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. He was disobeying not only his parents, but also that the Jews weren't to marry and, uh, uh, with the Gentiles, and especially those that we would be their enemies as well. And he paid a dear price for it. Absalom rebelled against his father David and was killed when he was a young man. We see in 2 Samuel, and I'm not going to read all this, chapters 15 through 18, and how that he ended up dying as a young man as well. It's not just about a long life in general, but it was a promise to live long in the promised land, Canaan land, that when they were obedient to God, and that when they would honor him, he would protect them, and he would guide them and make them strong among all the nations, and it worked until they rebelled and dishonored him. Yet, we can see that it applies today as well. Paul changed the words land to earth. In Exodus 20, verse 12, so that you can see what I'm talking about, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long on the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Speaking of the Canaan land. But when Paul tells us, honor thy father and thy uh, mother, I'm sorry, verse 3, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now he changed because he was dealing with the Jews specifically in Canaan, and if they obeyed him, they would live long lives, prosperous lives, succeed in the eyes of God and of the world. But Paul changed it to earth, and I believe then we can think, see how then it can apply to us, not for the promised land, but that our lives can be prolonged and fruitful in this life, however long that that might be. When children obey their father, it can often keep them from sin and danger and therefore avoid things that threaten or can shorten our lives. Had my father lived uh, much longer than he had, he might have been able to help me stay out of some trouble. It's important to have fathers in this life and to obey them, even if we don't necessarily always agree. When children obey their father, it is a benefit to us. It affects our temporal lives, but it also can affect our spiritual lives. It's not just speaking about the quantity of life, but the quality of life. The Bible does tell us in James chapter 4 verse 14, that life is as a vapor. We know that our physical life, our temporal life, uh, we don't know how long that's going to be. It's like a vapor, here for now and gone in a moment. We never know when that is. 
We know that in Psalm 90 and verse 10 that our days are three score and 10 or 70. And maybe we might see four score, 80. Some of you here have lived much longer than that as well. It's not so much about the quantity. It's about the quality. Our fathers help us live a a life of quality. Though sometimes they may help us live a life of greater quantity as well. Is or will your life be as long in earth as it should be? Maybe that's why some of us here today, that our lives have been as long as they are. We had good fathers that warned us, helped us, shaped and molded our lives uh, as we honored them. And it helped us live longer, but yet we benefited in the quality of life. I've used several folks, uh, several men in particular, and how that uh, they say that they love their fathers, and uh, because of that, it was a benefit to their life. Fathers can do that when children honor their parents and their father in particular. And so we're to honor our Heavenly Father the same, the perfect example, who has given us His Holy Spirit, has given us His Word, that we can live longer lives. How many of us might have lived or could live longer had we not done things to these bodies that we did? Cigarettes, alcohol, I don't know all the things that we do anymore. Those things of the past, I don't think of them anymore. Things that have really wrecked our bodies and that we might have been able to live longer had we not done them. And our parents said, don't do that. Oh, that won't happen to me. I'll do that. We need to listen to them, but we need to listen to our Heavenly Father. Many lives that were not lived according to their parents, and in particular their fathers, have been shortened as well because they didn't honor their father and mother. And they should have. Living a life in the fast lane and not a godly or a moderate life benefiting them from the wisdom of their fathers who love them and want what's best for them. I know as a young person, I thought mom and dad, they just told me not to do things because they just wanted me to be miserable. And I found out as I made my children miserable, uh, I was really trying to benefit them. Uh, Sometimes they honored me, but many times they didn't. But our Heavenly Father is the same way. He has given us His Word and warned us and given us examples of how to live our lives, not only to prolong them physically, but to give long life spiritually, living for Him and ultimately, eventually, forever with Him into eternity. We've been speaking about honoring our fathers But what is really meant by honoring our fathers? It's not just about obedience, though that's important. In verse 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And though obedience is important, we need to honor our parents. It's about respect, bringing honor by our actions. According to Webster's College Dictionary, it says, Honoring is to have a high regard, or when great respect is given. How little or how much do we see that today? There was a time that even if we didn't agree with our dads, we did respect them. Maybe not for the right reason. But we honored them and respected them to a greater degree than today. The world wants to raise our children and take that away from from our fathers. We need to have a high regard for our fathers. Give them the respect they deserve. It doesn't mean that they're always right. You know, someone doesn't have to always be right for us to respect them. We can respect them and honor them for many other reasons. We are to 
view our earthly fathers with honor and respect, even if they may have failed us. They deserve it. Many times in the Bible when it talks about respecting our elders, and sometimes it's just because they live long. They've learned some things. And though we may not agree with them, they have something of value for us. They may have made many other mistakes, but we still should honor them and respect them. As I said, to honor our parents and our fathers, it means more than just obey, but to respect and bring honor to them by how we live our lives. I'd like to think that even though my father's been passed away for many years, if he were alive today, that he'd be proud of me and that I would have brought honor to his name. It's the same as children of God, that we must live our lives to bring honor to him and that we would be well-pleasing in his sight. It's also to bestow honor to someone that has a keen sense of right and wrong. Those having good judgment and integrity. Our fathers, even some of us, may not be or have been the smartest of men, but over time have become wise through practice and through patience. And these things must be taught and not just by word of mouth. It's easy to say, don't do this. It's more important to see that we don't do some things or that we might do some other things. It's about what we do, living rightly, holding moral, biblical standards. That's our responsibility, not just our benefit, or not just to benefit us, but that of our family. Honor is also when someone has a reputation of purity and chastity. Some examples could be not foul-mouthed or a liar or, or no integrity. We're told in Colossians 4, 6, let your speech always be with grace. I don't know about your fathers, but my father probably could have worked on that one a little bit. And therefore, as a young man, I learned to talk rather foully. I could outcuss him till I got a little older and used to be proud of it. We learned from our fathers because we honored them and we loved them and respected them. But just because he may have made some mistakes in what he might have taught me doesn't mean that he wasn't worthy of honor and respect. He did many good things. He was a man of integrity. He taught me right from wrong, good from evil, that has helped me through my life. And we need to respect and honor that no matter what. But as a father, especially us as godly men, through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we should be ch teaching our children of purity and chastity, being ethical in all our dealings with a clean mind not driven by lust or greed or envy. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11 teaches us not to be slothful in business. It's really speaking of being diligent and of earnest care in business and all of our endeavors. That was one thing that at one time was mostly taught in most households about that you're diligent in your business, in your world affairs. Not so much today. We as Christian fathers, we need to teach these things because they're right and they please our Heavenly Father. We're not to be lazy about doing right in everything. Men need to be men of integrity for our children's sake. Let them learn what is right, not only for the world, but for the Lord's sake. A father is not to be lazy, or he can't and won't care properly and provide for his family. 
in 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8, but if any prove not for his own, provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Those are strong words. Men are to take care of their families. That's our job. And yet the world today is teaching, let everybody else take care of our families, and we abandon them. I say we, I'm really speaking of men in general, I'm afraid, in these present generations. God expects all fathers to meet His standard, and that work, physical, mental, and spiritual, be accomplished. To meet the necessities of life, but the necessities of faith as well. More commonly, honor is to come when someone holds a high rank or position. We could call it civil authority. It's about being set in order. And in particular, when it's set in order by God, which is what happens with fathers, is that God, if He has allowed us to be a father, then He has set us in order. That is our station in life holding that high rank and doing right by God, our Heavenly Father. There's no greater rank and position of authority in this earth than to be a father. The regret that I have with my own sons where in areas of my life I did well, but when it came to spiritual things, I was a hindrance to my children. I didn't take it seriously. I was too busy living my own life. As fathers, once we have children, we need to take that seriously. It has a great responsibility. That's probably why many young men today, as they impregnate some young woman, and then they desert them. Even as a non-Christian, I have no respect for men that abandon their children and their families. That doesn't mean that I understand divorce and things happen, separations, but that doesn't mean that a father, not someone who impregnated a woman, a father, has a responsibility to take care of his children, to not abandon them. And we're teaching our children today to abandon their children and let the government raise them. Uh, it's our job. God has given us that responsibility, and we need to take it seriously. In Psalm 127, verse 3 through 5, it says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. We see that in a positive way. It's a heritage from God and fruit of the womb. We love fruit, and fruit is good for us. But how many times have we said about our children, well, they're a mistake? No, they were just what we haven't anticipated. Not a mistake. And it's not their fault anyways. And if we become a father, then we need to do right by them. It goes on and says, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. It is so sad when there are so many men who have children and it doesn't make them happy. I was one of those men many years ago. I couldn't wait till they finally grew up and got out of the house so I could live my life the way I wanted to live it, when I was really living it pretty much the way I wanted to anyhow. I'm ashamed of who I was, but not anymore. I did what I could the best I could until I got saved, and God has taught me, and now I can't fix things, but I can be happy for those men who have children. They bring joy to our lives. Yes, difficulties and struggles and all that stuff goes with it. But that God gifted us with our children. 
is something that we should not take lightly. They are a gift of God, no matter how many we have, a few or a quiver full. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Along with the authority of the position of fatherhood comes responsibility of the family that has been given to fathers. I have an illustration. Dusty like daddy. As a young pastor, and these are, this is someone else. As a young pastor, I worked at a feed processing plant in Selena, Ohio. Each night when I went home, my boys would look at me and say, Boy, Dad, you sure are dusty. I grumbled within myself, but smiled at the time and said, Yes, I sure am dusty. On a Saturday morning, I started washing my car. As I did this, my eldest son, four years old at the time, began to pick up the small stones in our drive and rub them onto his pants. I asked, what are you doing, son? He said, I want to be dusty like you, Dad. At that time, I realized that if a son would look up to his father for being dusty, he would look up to Dad for anything. What a responsibility we have. And we've failed so many times. I'm afraid I'm one of those that have failed in that area. The first to admit it as a model of what not to do. God is the model of what to do. And he has given us his word and encouraged us and challenged us to be good dads. Our sons want to be like us. But if we're not a good example, they may become just like us. It is a high calling, though some are better suited than others. A father also meets or should meet some, if not all, of these criteria of honor uh, that I've laid out and will continue to lay out here. And therefore, our fathers and fathers in general deserve honor from their children and others as well. That's why we celebrate Father's Day today. We may not have honored our fathers like we should have, but we can today. My eldest son called me this morning. That's all I need. It shows me that as messed up as I may have been when I raised my sons, they still love me and honor me. It's sad that we can't, even if we mess up, can't honor our own fathers and expect our children, our sons, to honor us. Proverb 13.1 tells us that a wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Young people, and there's only a couple here, and some may be in another part of the building, need to pay attention to your dad or your mom, those in authority over you, your grandparents. They love you, and they deserve your respect and your honor, whether you agree with them or not. They've lived a few more years. They know some things through practical experience, if nothing else. As sons and daughters to our earthly fathers, we should listen to their years of wisdom, even if we don't necessarily agree. We're never too old to listen. I still listen to my mom. When she shares some things to me that she feels is important, I listen to her. I may not always do it, but I listen to her. She's lived a number of years, gained experience and wisdom that is still a benefit to me. And so for our young people, pay attention to your parents. For those of us who are a little older, if we still have parents with us, listen to them. What they have to say might still help us. We should heed their wisdom. 
but we should most certainly heed the wisdom of our Heavenly Father and honor Him and bless Him as well. Fathers should be given high regard, if nothing else, simply for being fathers, as messed up as they may be. We should show them respect, even if they may not respect us. And hopefully, we will be acknowledged for having a keen sense of right and wrong and being men of integrity, at least our Christian fathers. They should be properly honored for having a good and pure reputation, having walked in the newness of life. That is the greatest example a father can do, is let your children see your faith, that you walk your faith and not just talk your faith. And I'm afraid there are many Christian fathers today who may be saved, but live contrary, or don't let their children see that they pray, read, have devotions. We need, as godly men, godly fathers, let our children see our faith, live it out, and I believe they will honor us and respect us. Fathers deserve honor this day for having met some or all of the criteria that I've laid forth previously. But if for no other reason, because you're commanded by God. I'm glad that our nation is wise enough, at least for the time being, that we set aside this day to honor our fathers. Maybe they're not with us any longer. I think of my dad this day. And my dad messed up as much as anybody, maybe more. But I sure wish my dad were still with me. Once they're gone, they're gone. But that doesn't mean we still can't honor them this day for our dads, as messed up as they may be. But let us, most importantly and foremost, let us honor our Heavenly Father this day and every day. Men, don't forget, fathers are necessary. They're important for a successful and pro prosperous society and a beneficial nation. America is where it is today mostly because our men, many fathers, have failed at doing the job that God had placed them in. And the only way it's going to get straightened out is men to be saved but men to quit abandoning their families, taking on the responsibility and raising their families rightly according to the word of God. It's not too late. We might ask our fathers necessary, and who, here's a few illustrations. Children. In a single parent family are five times more likely to be poor. And half the single mothers in the United States live, and actually that half is now 70% in the United States, live below the poverty line. Children of divorce suffer intense grief, which often lasts for many years, even as young adults. They are nearly twice as likely to require psychological help. Children from disrupted families have more academic and behavioral problems at school and are nearly twice as likely to drop out of high school. Girls in single parent homes are at a much greater risk for precocious sexuality and are two and a half times more likely to have a child out of wedlock. Crime and substance abuse are strongly linked to fatherless households. Statistics show that 60% of rapists grew up in fatherless homes. 
as did 72% of adolescent murderers and 70% of all long-term prison inmates. In fact, most of the social pathologies disrupting American life today can be traced to fatherlessness. Fathers are necessary. They're important. We need to teach this to young men, even if they're not our own sons, where we have an opportunity in our churches, in our Sunday school classes, to our neighbors, where we have an opportunity. Let us be a father, if nothing else, to a family that has no father, or a help to a father who isn't doing his job, if he'll allow it. It'll benefit not only their children, but it'll benefit us individually and as a nation. It's important. There is one other thing that Webster says about honor, that it can mean worship a deity. Men, each and every one of us here today, we are not deities or God. Though sometimes our young children view us that way. And we should keep that in mind. That adds greater responsibility. We need to begin to live rightly ourselves, but we need to see that our children recognize that we honor and worship our deity, our Heavenly Father. He is the only deity. The Bible tells us He is God, the great I Am, the last and the first. And as a personal relationship or having a personal relationship with Christ, we see in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, how that we then are partakers of the divine nature of God. whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It is only in and through Christ that we become like God. And Jesus, having His divine power and nature, Jesus is deity, and therefore so must our Heavenly Father be. And then as deity, God, our Heavenly Father, is to be honored and must be honored and revered and worshipped. That's why we come to this place, not only today, but every Sunday. Honoring our Heavenly Father properly is truly about worship. Worship is a form of honor. And prayer is a part of true worship. H.A. Ironside said, True worship is the outpouring of our soul by God's answered prayer. It is a heart in tune with a melody overflowing with love, appreciation, and thanksgiving. I think of the song, In My Heart There Rings a Melody. And though our children may worship us to some degree, at least when we're young, We're to worship our God, our Heavenly Father, in that way, in spirit and in truth. With a song in our heart and not just from our lips. Prayer is the beginning of worship. And Jesus gave us an example, a model of prayer. How we should pray to Him. His disciples asked, how do we pray? And He gave an example Not that we are to pray that prayer. But there is the first few verses that I'm going to share, take a few minutes on that we need to keep in mind because we see a good example here. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 that we read, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus tells his disciples, Jesus is telling us, pray after this manner. It's not just a liturgy or a ritual for public worship or to be vainly and repetitiously prayed. 
but to pray with our Heavenly Father first and foremost in mind. We see our Father. He is the Father of His children, those of us who are born again. All mankind are the offspring of God, but only those born again are the sons and daughters of God. But as many as receive him, to them give he power to become the sons of God. John chapter 1 and verse 12. When we pray our Father, it shows our relationship with him, acknowledging him. And that's why it's important in our prayer that we begin first acknowledging him. God, the only one that can truly answer prayer. And when we have that right relationship, our Father, it's like in Romans 8, 15, we can cry and should cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. Have that close relationship. When we pray and begin our Father, that should be revealing our heart of an intimate relationship with Him. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father resides in heaven. I know we say, oh, well, of course, we all know that. But we don't think about it that way. We don't elevate our God, our Father, to that heavenly station that He deserves. We too often pull Him down to where He's just a superman, not God. And therefore, his children can then look forward to being with him one day in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, our Father, which art in heaven. Acknowledge him. Recognition his station in the universe, in your life, in every aspect of living. But then here it comes, hallowed be thy name. Honor him. Hallowed simply means honor as holy or sacred. When's the last time you even thought of God as being holy? He's a holy God. That's why we can offend him so easily. He is holy and pure and perfect. And when we pray, hallowed be thy name, we are honoring him, exalting him for who he is. His name is worthy of honor. Simply His name. He is holy and therefore sacred. We must revere Him and reverence Him for who He is and what He has done. He is the only and true living God. Hallow His name. And not only when we pray, but in our living. As our children try to imitate us, when's the last time we tried to imitate our Heavenly Father? Sunday? Occasionally? If we honor and respect our Heavenly Father like we may have attempted to honor and respect our earthly fathers, then we will live for Him. Try to be like Him. We must ascribe the praise to our Heavenly Father that He deserves. And He even commands it in 1 Peter 1.16, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy, His kingdom is come. As He rules and reigns in us now and through eternity. His kingdom exists presently. And believers are to be a part of it. But the perfection, the fulfillment of the kingdom is future during the millennium reign of Christ and ultimately in the new heaven and new earth. We see in Revelation 21.1. It's not just an earthly kingdom like the nation of Israel was looking for during Jesus' time on earth. We're to pray and work for the advancement of God's kingdom. How many times have we prayed for the advancement of the kingdom of God. We pray for many things, and those things are not wrong. 
But how many times have we prayed to advance? God, use me. Give me opportunity to advance your kingdom. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Lord, help me advance your kingdom. Without honoring and reverencing him, I think we'll struggle in that area. And then lastly, and I think just or most importantly, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Not my will, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. A will or to will is a strong and fixed purpose or self-determination. Jesus did always the will of the Father. We saw in John chapter 4, verse 34, and chapter 5, verse 30. He never did what He wanted, but He wanted whatever the Father wanted. We too should desire the same. Not our will be done, but the Father's. Robert Law said, Prayer is a mighty instrument, not for getting man's will done in heaven, but for getting God's will done in earth. Believe on the Lord Jesus. Obey the law. Be holy. Surrender and yield your will to His, just as Jesus yielded to His Father. If you can't or won't do His will, it's because you're doing your own, for your own reason and purpose. Remember, the Bible says, Thy will be done in earth that is is in heaven. The will of God, His creation in heaven, also does the will of the Heavenly Father and not their own. The cherubims and pharaohims and all the heavenly hosts. All of God's creation in heaven and without exception, God expects us to hallow His name and to do His will. The heavenly hosts see His glory always face to face in ways that we can't yet. But in the future kingdom, we will. Do the will of God because of the example set in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. When we do that, we will honor our Heavenly Father. And if we live by this, we will honor our earthly fathers. Today, as a nation, we're called to remember our fathers and honor them. As Christians, God commands us that every day we do the same. We're called to honor our Heavenly Father, not just once a week, but every day and every moment. We honor our fathers by who they are, by honoring them, by how we live our lives for them. Honor them, acknowledging and being aware of their imperfections and limitations because their love of God and family for their integrity and purity in the word and deed and for their position of authority and responsibility as a father. Let us not forget to honor our Heavenly Father, the one who exceeds the criteria that I've tried to to lay out before you this morning, who deserves that great honor, who has never failed us nor his family. Let us spend some time this day worshiping that perfect example. I know what's going to happen. We're going to, many of us are going to take our dads out to lunch, and that's wonderful. But let us not forget to honor our Heavenly Father today. Pray using that model prayer in Matthew 6. Live the words that we utter. My Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth that is in heaven. Fathers, have a happy Father's Day.